Here's the problem. Let me tell you a problem about these kind of businesses. Okay. There's almost no overhead. Right. So the tax game is always an interesting game of which 6,000 pound vehicle can I buy? Which, which thing can I do here? Which mm -hmm. way can I do this? So do you ever sell these businesses? Yes, for sure. Um, we actually uh, are one of our first businesses was called elementary librarian.com. And my wife was an elementary librarian. So she uh, created a, a lesson plan library for librarians. So they wouldn't have to ever plan lessons again. They could just show up, teach and go home at three 30. Right. Yeah. And uh, so they paid like 50 bucks a month to get access to all the resources. Um, about three or four years after we quit our teaching job, Jocelyn had a librarian for a while. I had on a while and we decided to uh, sell all those. And at the same time, Flip Lifestyle was taking off. We had started really helping a lot of people in what we did. We had another website too. I still have it. It's called ushistoryteachers.com where we sell lesson plans to social studies teachers. But mm -hmm. we actually sold elementarylibrarian.com for $1.1 million on a contract. And, um, and then our students, we've had multiple students come in. We had a guy named Jeff Twitty. Um, he sold a geometry lesson plan website. That was interesting uh, for a couple million dollars. We had a guy come in and he did an in, uh, internet kind of security type business with this thing. It exploded and became this huge company. Uh, he sold it to Microsoft for 20 million. And then uh, this lady named Jennifer Bradley, she sold one for 750 grand. She was a speech language pathologist, had a big membership with like 1500 pathologists in it. So what's, what's wow. cool about the businesses that we create is we focus totally on recurring revenue at the beginning. Right. And then we automate and streamline, which makes a business a higher multiple because that's what it is. So yeah, man, people, we have people now come in and they're just like, I want to build this thing until I can, you know, get a thousand people in it. And I want to try to sell this. I got a broker that sells them for them. And yeah, man, it's really good stuff. How do you handle the tax? On the sale or just in general? On the sale. You know, that was a long time ago. I had an accountant help me work on it and my tax guy, <laughs> you know, yeah. but um, it was definitely a big one-time event, those big events. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't exactly remember what we did to kind of shield some of that. I know we purchased a lot of stuff. Here's the, now here's the problem. Let me tell you a problem about these kind of businesses. Okay. There's almost no overhead. Right. So the tax game is always an interesting game of which 6,000 pound vehicle can I buy? Which, which thing can I do here? Which mm -hmm. way can I do this? Because you'll, you'll be making, you know, you might be making, let's say you're making $50,000 a month, right? Let's say you got, you know. 50, 500 people paying you a hundred bucks a month or whatever. You may only have $10,000, $5,000 in expenses on that business. If you don't have any employees, because what, what, what happens is all you need is like the software to run the business, the hosting company yep. to have your courses, um, maybe advertising budget. And then you don't have a lot of room for that. So what we, the big thing that we did after we sold our business is when we built Flip Lifestyle, we kind of built it in a more scalable way by hiring employees, putting money back into the business, getting investment strategies like that. We did some other things too, like we set up like family management companies, um, brought the kids on board so we could funnel some money down to them. Um, like buying vehicles, buying equipment, doing things we could really pour back into the business and make it grow even bigger uh, was the best, was how we started handling the taxes after that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of like what I what you know, I'm, I'm leading us down a little path here because, you know, what you just said was huge. You know, there's no overhead, right? There's no, there's no cost yeah. basis to these things. I mean, the couple thousand bucks, maybe for if you're maybe. buying HubSpot, right? Like that's exactly. Like, and I'm we, sure we you're not a, even we, we, Hub. No, nah, dude, we use a software. We use a software called Kajabi. It's freaking two hundred dollars a month, and you can make as much money as you want on it. Like our company, right, so uh, we. We did eight million in sales last year on this two hundred and fifty dollars right. software program. So you've you got know? you've got a right a, a very minimal cost basis, right? And you know what you didn't mention, and it's up there on the screen right now, is you know what's the biggest frustration with the ten thirty one exchange? And the thing is, is, you didn't even mention it because you can't even do a ten thirty one exchange with a business. That's exactly right. Yeah, man. You know, like and yeah. and that's the issue here is you have this super like high multiple business that's, that's yep. working off a of revenue with zero cost basis that, you know, if you're trying to have that liquidity event, that one time big liquidity event, it's extremely difficult to, to get out of it. You're buying, you know, if, if it's, if it's an $8 million sales funnel, dude, you're buying an airplane. 
Right, right which is cool one time, but how many airplanes dude, we, do you need? I, we were shopping for airplanes earlier this year. I swear <laughs> to God, I can't believe you said that, dude. Because a guy, a buddy of mine was like, dude, you got to go try to buy an airplane. And we were legit. Like, I actually, like, I was like, before I did it, before I called the guy, I bought a puzzle of an airplane. And I'm like, this is insanity. I'm going to put this puzzle together to make me set, slow down and think about this. And we were legit like, yeah, this is feasible. I think we could do that. <laughs> like, it was feasible. like, it was crazy, man. And like, what, what kills me about it is like, you know, for online business owners too, like there was such a learning curve, dude. I got so blasted my first year in taxes. Cause I was, you know, I was a W2 yeah. guy my whole life. And I had to like learn this stuff swimming uphill on how not to get it just annihilated on taxes, let alone right. win the tax game. And then when you sell a business, like, you know, the broker doesn't care. He's just telling you what you're going to make. And then you get it and the taxes come and you got to figure oh. it out, you know, yeah. and, and you can succeed so fast in these online businesses that this stuff without help, like what, like you guys do, like it's almost impossible uh, for just right. the, the normal entrepreneur can make the pizza. They, they can sell the pizza. But how do you pay taxes on the pizza? <laughs> that's usually right. what happens with guys like us, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely, man. And that's and that's the the whole reason why this podcast exists, right? Like, how do you exit these things without getting that that slapped with that huge tax bill? And I'll leave you with this little nugget. <clears throat> you know, the the strategy, the cornerstone strategy that we like to use that is just just so powerful for your specifically for your industry and your business, uh, just because of the high multiple, right? The reoccurring revenue the uh and, and the inability to do a 1031 with extremely low cost basis right it's all yeah. gain and so depending upon your state you're anywhere from from 20 to 23 point you know eight to to 50 yeah, percent in man. some states right you're in california yeah. you're getting destroyed you know, yeah. yeah absolutely so we use a strategy it's called the deferred sales trust and what it allows you to do is it allows you to liquidate the asset it allows you to pay off any debt that you have. It allows you to defer the tax and then allows you to reinvest the proceeds in whatever you want. Hmm. So what you what you could have done, right? And what your clients can do is they can actually sell their business, okay? They can defer all the tax. The, the proceeds will go into this business trust. And then that business trust, they can go out and they can go buy real estate. Or they can go uh, put it in stocks, or they can go put it in passive income funds, or they can hard money loan, or they can invest in insurance, or they can do whatever, anything that they can invest in. Dude, where were you in 2017 when I needed to hear bro, this, bro? We were, I was like, I was like, let's spend it all back on the business and double down and try, which worked. But it's at the same time, it's like we're sitting there scrambling before the government gets right. All. You know, that's the thing. Yo, so, that's genius. Man. You know, the, the thing is, is that this strategy, right, allows you to it, it open it, it gives you freedom yeah. because now you're you're doing freedom, financial freedom, time freedom. Right. Because you now now we're providing exit freedom. Right. Capital yeah. gains, freedom, freedom from the 1031 location, freedom. You can go out. You can diversify. Right. You could put a portion in stocks, bonds, mutual funds. You could put a portion in real estate. You could be an entrepreneur. You can do it. We had a client bought Bitcoin, <laughs> 50 grand, That's 50 hilarious. grand back in like, Oh nine. Wow. Dude. Boom. Yeah. It man. went up to like 50 million after when it hit like 68,000. Right. Wow. It's since dropped significantly, sure. but it's coming back. But she, yeah. she liquidated probably about 5 million of it. Heck yeah, deferred bro. about 1.85 million of tax. Yeah. And then she used that money to the, you know, the 3 million basically to live passively off of. Wow. which is her, her relatively conservative portfolio. But then she took the other 1.85 million and she put it into a, an entrepreneurial business venture with her roommate in college. And now they're teaching some person in probably a very similar, you know, online so, business yeah, yeah, yeah. model. She right? might be like, one of my students. I don't know. Maybe she's she like, maybe be. she was a flip lifestyle alumni. Who knows, man? Maybe so. she was, man. <laughs> uh, she flipped her lifestyle and she, when, when she bought Bitcoin for 50 grand. 